Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Walkabout uh, is developing the Lindy Jumbo graphite project in southeast Tanzania. It's high grade, high margin, and uh, we, we're just starting with uh, uh, moving into the second phase of development and signing uh, material agreements. And um, uh, that means we're in change. And uh, that change is uh, very good for us. It means we're going to become a full cycle minerals company. Uh, we're moving now from pure exploration into construction. And for a, a, a cranky, let me demonstrate for you what that means for a, a cranky old mining engineer. Right. <laughs> now we're ready. The investment drivers underpinning Lindy Jumbo uh, is that it's been uh, classified as the second highest graphite, second highest margin graphite project in the world by Benchmark Minerals. We're moving to a 62.5% geared debt funded project. Uh, the debt has been secured and I'll speak about that a bit later. The project is fully de-risked and uh, completely ready to build. Also, it is underpinned, both companies are underpinned by a good team of people uh, working with, who I've worked with uh, for years, the people at Lindy Jumbo and the people in Walkabout um, make it a pleasure working at both those companies. ESG is an important measure nowadays. Um, this project will have many positive contributions for our investors, for Tanzania, for stakeholders. Um, we, we are unable yet to measure our footprint, um, but we are moving towards a best practice framework, uh, which will in particular highlight va vastly improved social and local conditions for uh, stakeholders. We're very proud of the fact that uh, our, our mantra in Tanzania is local first, national second, an international third. So the debt funding has been secured through CRDB Bank, a local Tanzanian bank, a retail bank. And this came about through uh, our mine manager, Paul Showery, uh, making the comment to the bank manager at the mine site that uh, we needed to secure a loan to, to build the project. That message went up through the ranks at CRDB and they contacted us in order to uh, start discussing whether that was possible. Well, two years later, a lot of persistence from, from us, from management, from the bank management, and the Prime Minister of Tanzania, it's become a reality. And uh, we, we're very pleased that uh, the terms are, are favorable. Um, we believe it's one of the first listed uh, graphite projects that have secured debt. And uh, uh, we, we expect to be also the first graphite or first mining project in Tanzania to be built since the 2017 amendments. This is uh, an image of the funding model. Um, we believe it's the best example of the local nature of the project. Um, the foreign direct investment is in the light blue area and that's uh, represented by our initial pre-funding in, sec in, in securing and exploring the project up to resource and study level. And then the project equity portion, which will be a 12 million US dollars uh, contribution. So the dark gray area you can see is, is re really the Tanzanian area. And almost the entire project is run from that company. So uh, Lindy Jumbo is a, a highly autonomous company. It makes day-to-day -day decisions about its business environment in Tanzania on its own. It takes uh, uh, management directorship from us in Australia, as well as, uh, of course, technical advice. But we believe that this is really in the spirit of what the Tanzanian government was trying to achieve when it put forth its localization content issues. So the debt funding, uh, 
This slide shows the conditions precedent situation where we are. Uh, we're raising the equity in three phases at uh, 12 million US, about 20, 18 to 20 million Australian. Uh, we've finished tranche one through an institutional placement last month, and we're now busy with tranche two, which is a rights issue to our shareholders. Uh, about a similar size, $7 million Australian, and then phase three will uh, happen uh, slightly later in the year. The, the, the benefit of doing this, though, is that we're able to start drawing down on our equity first and start construction. This uh, slide just shows the equity raises and how we're able to start drawing down that four million per, per time. So we are already signing contracts for the civils and the plant manufacturer to uh, start shipping equipment. Uh, the EPC is, is in China. A lot of our long lead items have already been manufactured and, and they are, are being readied for loading. Um, Trans 2 will uh, continue to finalize the shipping and get uh, the, the civils and get the equipment into Tanzania. And Trans 3 will start with the other infrastructure and plant erection. The minute we have drawn down that uh, 12 million, we unlock the 20 million in, uh, in bank loan which then will um, allow us to complete the project and supply working capital into our startup. So um, th throughout the period of raising and development, we've encountered a lot of hesitancy and doubt over Tanzania's fiscal environment. A lot of this is legacy issues from the 2017 Mining Act amendments, which were quite sudden and without any consultation. Um, We've always felt that there were no real deal breakers there and that we could work with them. This list uh, uh, shows um, the 2007 amendments and you can see our compliance through Lindy Jumbo in most of the areas. The most controversial is the 16% free carry, uh, which was really a, the precedent has been set by Barrick and Acacia through a company called Twigger now and the model is determined. We don't need to have that finalised in order to start construction, but we are in negotiations with government. Um, and and uh, we are assured that their intention is that that 16% free carry only kicks in when the company declares dividends after it has repaid all its debt. Moving to key approvals, we also get a lot of uh, doubt about our readiness to start construction. All the permits are ready. This is uh, about 15 of, of 60 or 70. These are the most important ones. Um, the Minister of Mines of Tanzania is constantly pushing us and our peer group as to why we're not developing, why we're not constructing. So they are not the problem and, and nowhere throughout Tanzania is the legislative uh, arena the problem. It's largely the investment communities around the world. Some quick uh, differentiating uh, factors about the project. Um, it is 17.9 uh, uh, percent total graffiti carbon as mill feed um, is one of the highest in Africa. Uh, it's very high grade. Um, the product we deliver is uh, a premium product. About 25 percent of the product will go to batteries and uh, we prefer, we, that, that produces about 12% of our, um, our revenue. So the other 75% of material will produce the other 88%. And also the third pillar of risk on which the mine was designed was the scale. We, we didn't want to go in and say, we're going to disrupt the market with 200,000 tonnes of graphite in a, in a growing environment. We set the production at uh, 40,000 tonnes per annum and we can expand out of that. In that way, we're able to ensure we have our sales locked in through our offtakes and that uh, we reduce startup risk. The mining is very simple. It's, uh, it's low risk, it's on surface. Uh, it's, there's a very high grade, four high grade bands that run through the ore body, through the pit. And um, these are easily visible and that gives us the potential to constantly tweak the input grade should we need it and through that to really uh, optimise our plant performance. Uh, the processing is also very simple, low cost. Um, most of graphite plants, particularly those in China, have up to 12 stages of regrind in order to get the grade up 
the concentrate grade up to 95%, which is a good standard. Um, in our case, we have four of those. So those are not even regrinds, they're more polishing, which really allows us through our, our processing to retain the large jumbo and super jumbo flakes. And through that, we increase the revenue uh, of, of the overall product and the basket price. These are the uh, products that we produce, um, or will produce. Uh, they are uh, one of the highest ratios around in terms of the super jumbo, the plus 500s. And you can see the contribution that that gives um, uh, to the, the overall revenue. So it's our key product. We will really nurse it through the, through the process. And it's in very high demand. Um, the expandability is also very good. So one of our key markets is expandable graphite. And uh, this is one of the top end, uh, 450 to 500 times whereas in China the base is around 250 times. Again, we're going to get a lot of revenue uh, increase on expandability, and it also opens the door for our own downstream processing into expandable graphite. These are a, a list of the markets that we'll be entering. You'll see the bottom one there is the batteries, uh, about 25% of our product. Um, the others are all existing markets, and w one of the things we believe is going to happen with the battery boom is that it's going to draw graphite away from other traditional markets and into battery graphite. It's going to be longer term contracts with the big battery factories and it's going to be um, premiums paid for that. And as a result, other areas of industry are going to find shortages. Now, since China controls uh, over 75% of the world's graphite processing facilities, and perhaps more, we think that any um, quality premium graphite produced outside of China is going to be attractive to other international markets. Our current offtakes are with Chinese upgrade companies, but we also have interest with Europeans and American outfits. Finally, uh, because we're moving into growth phase, we're reorganizing the company. Um, I'm stepping off the board to become a chief operating officer. Andrew Cunningham will become uh, Chief Executive Officer and we'll be getting two new NEDs so we have a, a board more in line with uh, the requirements of majority NEDs. And I uh, thank you for that.